From the beginning. From the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And through Him all things that have been made are made. Now, people have a wrong idea sometimes about, well, here you got the Father, and here you got the Son, and there you got the Holy Spirit. But they're all talked about as a person, one person. And then God says he makes you in his image. We mentioned it a week or two ago, too, that you are a person in three parts, just like God. You have a body that people see. A body with certain feelings and needs of eating and things. You have a soul on the inside. Mind, which is your kind of your mind and your emotions and your personality and a very essence. I, we can't even describe. There, uh, philosophers have never found a way to really describe the soul in a completeness. But it's, it's the you, you. And then, but then it says Jesus yeah, God came and breathed on dead bones and brought life. Amen. So you're not just an animal body. There's even the animals, you know, they have personalities and things, and they can be trained and learn and all kind of things. There's an intelligence there. But with man, it says he breathed, God breathed on him and made him a living soul. And he, So it's his own, God's own breath that is in you that allows you to live and walk down the street. That allows you to take a breath of the air that he provided. To digest the food, everything. Living, 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 living soul. So, and so God himself... We're, we're, but you're still, say, say your name was Peter or something. Okay, somebody looks at you and says, hi, Peter, and they're looking at your body, right? But your soul is also, if your name is Peter, that you're also still Peter. And then the Spirit of God that joins with your spirit and makes you a living soul, that the Holy Spirit, God puts his spirit in you, mm -hmm. and... Your spirit is also Peter. Peter joined to God through the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, Peter what? Peter. If your name was Peter, and God joins as you accept and become saved, the, 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 there's a change. It's not just like animal bodies walking around. and it, you're, You have a change when your spirit and God's spirit Amen. become one spirit. And so God says, the Father and I are one. We have the same spirit. And he keeps, he keeps giving these bits of information that his disciples at the time can't really understand. But he wants to, that that's why he's one God. Amen. And the word was with God from the beginning. In other words, there was the soul. So what is the Father? The Father is like the soul, the thinker, the one that calls the shots, the one that designed everything and did everything like that. And then you have the body, which, is, which was the word, which was with God, that now it, in John it says came down to earth and walks with us, talks with us, became a man, born as a baby in the most humblest of circumstances, went through every kind of a situation that we do, yet but with, without any sin. Without any sin. Wow. Wow. So as you are all one with all your parts, God is one. And, and I do this because when, if we see, uh, here's the Father, and, and, and you have stupid questions like, well, when he's praying, our Father who art in heaven, was he praying to himself and all these kind of things? Yes, in a way he was. Because the God that was in heaven is still part of him. Isaiah, another name of Jesus is the arm of God in Isaiah, is it 57, somewhere around in there. Uh, it says, God looked down at the earth and saw the depravity and the sin and all the mess that's on the earth and said, and it was grieving his heart. And it says, seeing no man that could do this, there was no man sinless. There was no one that was qualified sinless to, to pay the penalty for our sin, to become sin for us, take it back to hell, redeem us completely. 
And in, the, in Isaiah, and seeing no one, he says, God said, my own arm. I'm picked my own arm. I'm sending my own right. arm down here. And so another name, we've been talking about the names of Jesus, the whole page in here. But one, another name is the arm of God. Now an arm is connected to a body, isn't it? So the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one God. So it helps to understand it when we realize that we're all, we're all one too. And, and now, show, wow, wow, wow. So everything that's in that name of Jesus, when Jesus comes into your heart, what does that give you? What, what do you, what, how does that touch you? How does that change you? Peace, yeah. joy. That's right. If you are in, if, if peace itself comes into you and then takes you to live inside of God, you're living inside of peace itself. You're living inside. Um, this is way beyond our minds. That's right. It's way beyond our understanding. And yet we rejoice in the truth of it. And as we rejoice in the truth of what we have, the sanctifier, the redeemer, the shepherd, the leader, the guide, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the greatest treasure, Amen. the meekness itself, humbleness itself, strength itself, one great, as we said a, a little while ago, one greater than Samson lives in you. How can, and that's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because we don't go by our feelings. Do we live by our feelings or do we live by truth? Truth. That's right. Because it, the only power that we have is a living according to the truth. And, and truth is another name for Jesus. Amen. So everything... Everything, everything we pray for, when we pray for this whole list of things, everything has only one answer, and that's the Lord Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. wow, 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 wow. The unchanging one, so the eternal one. We are have eternal life in that. So that name of Jesus brings eternal life. Amen. When you are one with, this, with the eternal one, what does that make you? Eternal. Yes. If when you are one with the eternal one, you are eternal. Hope. When you are one with healing itself, what does that make you? A, a whole, a whole. And a whole person, and it also makes you a healer. What is our calling? Yes. Our calling is to be raised up into Jesus, into the full stature of everything that he is, everything that he does, every, using everything that he has. Wow, 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 So you're living inside of love itself. I was in a situation yesterday at the hospital, and uh, we have a bunch of people in hospitals right now. But anyway, uh, and somebody walked in that was just, you know, ready to kill, so to speak, uh, by a situation that was happening uh, outside. And they were ready to really, they ran in there because they knew we were praying in this one hotel, uh, one uh, hospital room. And um, whew, I can't tell you how many people have run into this building, run up to me in the streets and said like that. I was on my way to murder this guy over there in that house. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I'm done. And, but, but this one guy is walking down the street. And he grab, and he literally felt a hand grab a hold of the back of his jacket and drug him over. We were just packing up a meeting. You remember that, um, Dan? Were, were you? I think you were there that day. Yes. We were just packing up the truck after a meeting there on Carver Street. Mm -hmm. And this guy was walking by, and God literally put his hand on the back of his jacket and dragged him over there. Mm -hmm. And he started saying that he wasn't intending to come to our meeting or anything, or uh, wasn't one of that even attended. But God pulled him over, and he started immediately, he's in the presence of God, right? Because we just had a meeting there, and Dan is a carrier, and all of us have God in us. <clears throat> and he starts confessing how they had the hate that he had for this guy. And he was literally on his way to commit that murder. 
Did and, but God did not let... Did you have a garden? I, I don't know what method he's using. We didn't get into that. We just got into Jesus. But <laughs> we just uh, immediately just started loving on him. We didn't correct him. We didn't tell him, well, you can't have murder in your heart. You that's, Or even hate. Hate is the same as murder. And, and um, that you're, you're being led by the devil and you better you let us cast the devil. We didn't go none of those places. What did, I, we just looked up to God. So what did God do you want us to do? What, what's, what's the, what is the power in Jesus for this man right now? What is the power in Jesus for this man right now? And so we just put our arms around him because he was hurting. Amen. He wasn't just hating. Yeah, he, he was hurting badly from the way he had been treated. He was in pain. He was a wounded warrior, a wounded person. So we started just pouring love and balm and healing into his wounds. <laughs> and we just started praying for him. And Jesus just started healing and healing and filling him with goodness, with the things that come with the name of Jesus. He started getting filled with, with love, forgiving, uh, forgiving nature. And, and compassion, another name for Jesus is the compassionate one. So in him, what are we? We're the compassionate one in Christ. Because in Christ, we're just like him. So all of a sudden, as he began repenting of his sins in the presence of the Lord, he's just standing next, you know, standing next to Jesus does strange things to a person as the way the world looks at it. It's natural in the kingdom. <laughs> but people just feel like repenting of their sins. And so that's what he did. And then we just kept loving on him and praying with him and encouraging him until he, out of his own mouth, was forgiving that guy, Hallelujah. loving that guy, love your enemy. So it's not enough just to forgive him and, or avoid him. But he, he loved, he just loved and loved and loved that guy. Amen. And so a life was saved. A couple of weeks later, this guy comes back to one of the meetings, and I go, hey, how are you doing? And he said, oh, I've got a testimony. And I thought he was going to share how he got delivered of all this stuff. He had in the mind. But he didn't do that. He said, oh, I met this guy, and he was going over to rob this person over here. And, I, and so he did what God had done for him. He was a doer of it. Immediately he was bearing the fruit of his deliverance and his healing. Amen. And he was, and he said, and I just prayed with him and blessed him. And, and the guy repented of, of, of being a thief. And the whole, sin, the whole sin nature, which was called, where the devil says, you are a thief. And then you say, yes, I am. And so you, do, you agree with the word of Satan who is nothing but a filthy liar. And it's true that you have sinned and need a redeemer. That's right. Amen. But God, uh, whoo, so if you if you find yourself saying, I am, I steal, I am a thief, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to remain a thief? Or are you going to repent of the Lord and just let him wash you and clean you in his beautiful, loving, kind, compassionate way that feels... Even when you're repenting of sin, there's a time of godly sorrow where you feel really, oh, you see the sin in its total ugliness, and you feel, and, and you see the blackness of it, and you understand, and you're not ignorant, you're not hiding in, in, a, in excuses anymore. All the excuses are gone, everything is gone, and in that, you just completely uh, have to be like Jesus. There's just a hunger. Oh, Jesus, I, I believe you. I believe when you say I can be redeemed that this sin nature is dead Amen. and has no power over me. Mm -hmm. But I am now one with the divine nature of God. My nature is the divine nature and the old man is dead. And so that guy, two weeks later, comes back and gives a testimony of how he has brought the same deliverance in the same way to us. To, uh, and, and it just kind of like a ripple effect. Whatever is Jesus does, this seems to have a ripple effect all the way down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That we are, and that's why the Bible says our confession, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
and who fills me and who made me better. I can do that. And I, so there was a few times the last couple of days when different people came up and said, but I can't do that. This smoking, it, it's just too hard. Amen. I said, who's bigger, Jesus or that cigarette? Mm -hmm. Or Jesus or your bad habit? You decide which is bigger. If you think that your bad habit that's killing you and put you in the hospital, if you think that bad habit is bigger than God, then God will let you believe that, but it'll break his heart. And he'll cry. It breaks his heart because he wants so much to give us good gifts. I've never known a kid on Christmas Day to reject all his gifts and say, oh, no, I don't want any gifts. He receives them with great joy. How much more should we be receiving the gifts of God with great joy? We can be just like him. I know it seems impossible. <clears throat> and this one guy says to me yesterday, but Miss House, you don't understand what it's like. Mm -hmm. And I'd had a lady say a couple days before that, but Miss House, you don't understand what it's like being with this person or being in this situation. And I said, who does understand? Who does understand? God. And they said, well, God understands. I said, does God understand? Yes. And they made him repeat it. God understands. Is he able? Is he able? Well, it says the just will live by faith. Faith in what they don't see yet. Faith while you're in the middle. Because uh, the devil wants us to say, when this gets better, you're going to be so much happier. When you have this roof over your head, you're going to be, it's just going to be so much better. But you can receive the better now. Amen. Please. If I don't say anything else today, I'm going to say this. Accept the better of God. And live, when you live by faith, it means you're living in the, that which is not yet seen as a solid substance. It is a solid substance. Substance. It is a substance so solid that any earthly thing like a nuclear bond could not break the solid substance that is created by the, uh, Jesus himself and by faith. It says faith is a solid substance and we don't go by sight and has power. The visible, the invisible has power over the visible. It, right, right there, in black. it's all there right in the word. The invisible, what you can't see, and you only have it by faith. Blind, blind, they call it blind faith a lot of times for that reason. What you only have by faith, that is the unshakable rock. It's called the rock of our salvation. The foundation that is unbreakable and unshakable. A building that a storm can hit. And because it's on that foundation of Christ, it's not moved. Amen. So, boy, I tell you, everywhere I've been going this whole week, God, I've watched, been watching God just challenge, challenge us deeper and deeper into Him, challenge us. Sometimes, you know, I can remember when the Lord was taking me through the first few times I've been going through the Bible. See, even now, this still happens to me. But they're not on every verse. I, can, <laughs> I have a few verses I've lived, you know. <laughs> but he would challenge me and say, can you believe this? And I'd go, oh, this is a hard one, Lord. How can this be true? This is too good to be true. How can it be true? And he'd say again, Alice, will you believe this? I was reading Isaiah 60 and 61 at the time. I kept reading down and he kept saying, will you, will you believe this? And finally I said yes. And everything changed. Ooh! My husband, who had been 
sick, had a heart attack, had a stroke, he had Epstein uh -huh. Bar. All this stuff could not work. We had um, five and then six kids at, at, during this time. And um, the Lord was giving me this about the riches just being dumped in your lap and all this stuff. And you'll be my servants and, um, uh, you know, he'll provide all these riches. And our part was just, just be a servant, follow him. That was all. Oh, wow. And the next, we, when we said yes, we're going to believe it, that Isaiah 60 and 61 is mine. My life first, and this was the normal Christian life. It wasn't, it was for Jesus first. It's describing Jesus first. And then in him, all, he's the firstborn and of many brothers being raised up into his stature. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Woo! And like I said, it's so good to be true. It's so good to be, it's so good you can't come by sight. You can only come by faith. Amen. They only have to just grab it while it's still invisible. That's right. Yeah. That's the only way that you can come. Mm -hmm. Even salvation is that way. That's why at the end of the times, when Jesus comes back, they will be. You would think there'd be more salvation with Jesus coming back, but it it stops. Mm -hmm. It stops. The number is complete. Mm -hmm. It stops because we cannot come by sight. We can only come by faith. Blessed are they that have not, that have believed and yet not, when they didn't see, he says to Thomas, blessed. Wow, 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 wow. Well, let's pray. We just want to thank God for what we have. We, Lord, we thank you, 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 thank you for doing in us what is impossible for man. Because all of these things that are exemplified by these names of Jesus that we were reading off of, that I was reading off that the Lord had had me write down this morning. Everything that we have in you, because the word is, is you. The word isn't just a, a magic word. Like, you know, a, a witchcraft has magic words that are supposed to have power and blah, blah. Jesus is not a magic word. Jesus is a person. And it's the Word. He is a person that has the name, the Word of God. Yes. And when we have Jesus, we have the name. And we have everything that that name represents. Wow, 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 wow. The name above every name. The name above every name. Thank you that you are above every name. And we don't have to understand it all. We don't have to understand the whole Bible. We don't have to know it all. All we have to do is say yes to you. A little little three-letter word, yes. Yes, God, I say yes to your invitation to be your child. I say yes to grow as a child. I say yes to be a follower of you. I say yes to your invitation to enter into you in any of these ways. To enter into you as Savior, Redeemer, Sanctifier, Leader, <laughs> Destroyer of Hate, Benefit, uh, the one who gives us all faith, all love, all compassion, all humility, all meekness, all strength, all healing, and everything else of his hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of names and attributes. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. All we can do is just be amazed and thankful. Amazed and thankful. And by, in fact, the Lord was showing me the other day that the actual humility, actual humility is exemplified in us and exhibited by a thankful heart. A thankful heart is the one who is acknowledging God in all of its ways. And when you acknowledge God in all the things that are happening, no matter if it looks good or it looks bad, because God says, will you take the good from me and not the bad? Not that, and not that word translated from the original is not evil. He's not the messenger of evil. But at the same time, we call it, but how many times do we call it bad when he is trying to bring discipline or teaching or put us in a situation where we have to apply, have faith to apply something we can't see yet to get the victory. Wow. 
So it might, I'm not saying, that we want every, we, we only call it good if it's comfortable and feels nice. But that's not God's definition of good. God's definition of good is what raises you up to be just like him so that you will know the blessings of God not only here and now on the earth as you see his hand and his name working everywhere, but you'll have that for all of eternity in a way that we don't even understand the treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow, the treasures. Woo! And guess what? That's why... That's why Jesus is called the greatest treasure, and one of his names is the greatest treasure, the one that's sometimes hidden in a field, and you sell everything. You give up everything. You give up everything you, everything, everything you want to do. All your bucket lists, everything is laid down. All the desires of the flesh are laid down. All the desires of the flesh are gone. Praise God. And because... In Jesus is the greatest. We sell it, we give it all up. And then we cast that bread on the waters and let it go away. And then when we have Jesus, we have everything. And everything comes out of that. Everything comes out of that. That we have the author, the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Wow. Because there's not even a shade of gray in Jesus, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. So thank you, Lord, that we're at grateful hearts today. Let's just stand up and worship.